The Wizard of Oz, retold from the original by L. Frank Baum. Once upon a time in Kansas lived a little girl called Dorothy and her puppy Toto. She lived very happily on a farm with her uncle and aunt. Then, one morning, when they had gone to work early and Dorothy and Toto were sleeping peacefully in bed, their adventure began. A fierce whirlwind swept across the fields and lifted the farmhouse, with Dorothy and Toto asleep inside, right up into the air. It whirled higher and higher up into the clouds, and then came to land with a bump in the middle of an emerald green field covered with flowers. Dorothy and Toto peeped outside, and there stood a little old lady, no taller than Dorothy. Welcome to the Kingdom of Oz, said the old woman and thank you for killing the wicked witch of the east. I'm sorry, Dorothy stammered, but I don't think I've killed anybody. Well, maybe you haven't, laughed the old woman, but your house certainly has, and she pointed to two feet in silver shoes sticking out from under the house. Dorothy and Toto looked in amazement as the old woman continued. Perhaps I should introduce myself. I'm the witch of the north, the witch of the south and I are the two good witches. There are, or were, two bad witches, one from the west and one from the east. It's the witch of the east you've killed. Dorothy began to cry. She didn't like to think that she'd killed someone. I want to go home, she sobbed. Oh, I'm afraid that's impossible, said the witch of the north. The only thing for you to do is to put on the wicked witch of the east's magic shoes and try to get to the Emerald City and see the Wizard of Oz. He's the only one who can help you. The Witch of the North showed Dorothy and Toto the way, and they set off along a road paved with yellow bricks. As they were passing a field of tall yellow corn, they heard a voice calling, Help! Hey, you over there! Can you help me? Why, exclaimed Dorothy, it's a talking scarecrow. How can I help you, scarecrow? Well, you could untie me for a start, gasped the scarecrow. I've been tied to this post to frighten the crows, and I've had enough of it. Dorothy and Toto untied the poor scarecrow. Oh, that's better, he declared. Yes, that's much, much better. And he skipped and jumped a few steps and gave a big smile. We're off to the Emerald City to see the Wizard of Oz, explained Dorothy. Who's the Wizard of Oz? asked the scarecrow. Dorothy was amazed that he didn't know, so she explained all about the Wicked Witch of the East. The reason I don't know about the Wizard of Oz, said the Scarecrow, is because I have no brain. My head is full of straw, but I'd really like a brain. Do you think the Wizard of Oz will give me one? I don't know, said Dorothy, but you're welcome to come with us and find out. The three walked on the whole day and slept in a hut at the side of the road. The next morning, just as they were starting their journey again, they heard a groaning noise. Lying at the side of the road was a rusty tin man. Dorothy and the Scarecrow helped him to his feet and tried to move his legs. Oh, stop, stop, moaned the tin man. Get me some oil. Dorothy remembered seeing some oil in the hut and she hurried back to get it. When Dorothy had oiled all the joints, the tin man was able to move again. Oh, thank you, my dear, thank you, he said politely. Dorothy explained that they were on their way to see the Wizard of Oz. You see, I want to go back to Kansas, and the Scarecrow wants a brain, so we're hoping the Wizard can help us. Do you think the Wizard might give me a heart? said the Tin Man wistfully. Why not come with us and see? said Dorothy. Off they set together when suddenly, with a terrible roar, a lion jumped out. Toto plucked up his courage and ran at the lion, barking with all his might. The lion immediately burst into tears. Boo-hoo, he sobbed. Please don't hurt me, I'm really very frightened. I'm the king of the animals, but I'm scared of everyone. Dorothy took pity on him. We're off to see the Wizard of Oz, she explained, because I want to go to Kansas. The Scarecrow wants a brain and the Tin Man wants a heart. Why don't you come and ask him for some courage? So the five of them set off together. Soon they came to a point where a huge ravine had opened across the road. There seemed to be no way forward. Dorothy was close to tears as she stood and looked down at the huge hole. Oh no, she moaned. How will we get across? 
The Scarecrow and the Tin Man scratched their heads and looked down glumly. Well, said the Lion, hesitantly, I suppose I could manage to jump across. Please do, dear Lion, begged Dorothy, otherwise there's no hope for us. Trembling with fright, the Lion told Dorothy to climb on his back, and with a giant leap he landed on the far side. Three times the Lion went back and collected Toto, the Scarecrow and the Tin Man, "'What a brave lion you are!' exclaimed Dorothy. "'Hear, hear!' echoed the scarecrow and the tin man, and Toto barked his approval. Off they set once again along the yellow brick road towards the Emerald City. They journeyed for many days and had many dangerous adventures and escapades before they finally arrived at the gates of the Emerald City. The keeper of the gates came to meet them. "'Hello there,' he said, looking them up and down. "'Just what can I do for you?' Dorothy cleared her throat and said nervously, <clears throat> We've come to see the Wizard of Oz, if you please. Phew! whistled the keeper as he shook his head. I don't know about that. Nobody has dared to visit him for years. Oh, please, begged Dorothy. You don't understand how important it is. And she told him the whole story of the whirlwind, the wicked witch of the east, and their journey along the yellow brick road. The keeper scratched his chin and thought. I suppose I could make an exception, just in your case, of course. Oh, thank you, said the tin man politely, while the scarecrow began to hum a happy tune and Toto wagged his tail. However, added the keeper in a serious voice, you will have to wear these special green glasses so you are not blinded by the splendour of the Emerald City. They put on their glasses and the keeper took a large golden key from his pocket and opened the gates to the Emerald City. Even with their glasses they were dazzled by the splendour of the city. The houses and palaces were made of green marble encrusted with jewels and the windows had emerald panes. The sky and the rays of the sun were the same magnificent green colour. The keeper accompanied them to the throne room and showed them into the wizard's presence. A bright green light bathed the throne and all they could see was an enormous bald head without a body. The bald head was glaring at them fiercely. I am the great and terrible Wizard of Oz, proclaimed the head. Who are you and what do you want? The others pushed Dorothy forward. My name is Dorothy, she started nervously, and Toto and I would very much like to go home to Kansas. The Scarecrow added, I'm the Scarecrow and I would like to have a brain. Excuse me, said the tin man, but I would very much like to have a heart, and I, said the lion, would like to have a little courage. They all looked at the wizard expectantly, waiting for his reply, when, with a flash and a bang, he began to turn himself into all sorts of weird things. First he became a beautiful princess with an emerald crown, then a monster with five arms, five legs and five heads, and finally a brilliant ball of light that was impossible to look at. At last he decided to speak. I really would like to help you all. In fact, I might. But before I can even begin to think about it, you must kill the Wicked Witch of the West. Dorothy was in despair. Of their long journey and all their struggles, they still had to perform another feat. But, she began, the wizard interrupted her with a mighty roar. No buts! Kill the Wicked Witch of the West before you dare to speak to me again. There was nothing Dorothy or her friends could do. Dejectedly, they left the palace and started off on the yellow brick road again. As they wandered along, they wondered how on earth they would find the Wicked Witch of the West, but they need not have worried, because she found them. The Wicked Witch could see like a telescope, and she kept a special army of flying monkeys at her beck and call. She had been watching out for Dorothy, because she wanted to avenge the death of her friend, the Wicked Witch of the East. As soon as she saw Dorothy and her friends leave the palace, she sent the flying monkeys to capture them, and bring them to her castle. Aha! she sneered as she looked down at the nervous group. I'm going to make you all suffer, but you, and she pointed at Dorothy, will suffer most of all. And she set them to work in the castle, 
polishing, sweeping, dusting and peeling the potatoes. The monkeys kept watch over them and made Dorothy work the hardest of all. Their days were very miserable. The witch was really wicked. One day, in an even more violent temper than usual, she hit Toto with an umbrella. This was too much for Dorothy, who was on her hands and knees washing the floor. Stop it, stop it, you horrible old witch, she shouted, and picking up the bucket of water, she threw it all over the witch. With a terrible yell, the witch began to dissolve. You're killing me, she shrieked. Water makes me disappear. And with that, she vanished before their eyes. Once the wicked witch was gone, the monkeys disappeared too and Dorothy and her friends were free to go. Joyfully, they made their way back to the Emerald City. They were met at the gates by the keeper, who showed them to the throne room. There was no one sitting on the throne, but as they looked around, a loud voice they recognised rang out. I am the powerful Wizard of Oz, it boomed. What do you want? Are you looking for me? Surely you remember? shouted Dorothy. I'm Dorothy. You sent me and my friends to kill the Wicked Witch of the West before you agreed to grant us our wishes. We've returned to tell you that we succeeded. The witch is dead. Did I say that? queried the wizard. I really don't remember. Perhaps you had better go and kill someone else before I can grant your wish. Dorothy got very angry. You promised, she yelled. The lion let out an angry roar which startled Toto, who jumped in the air and knocked over a screen in the corner of the room. To everyone's amazement, hidden behind the screen was a little old grey-haired man. Who are you? demanded Dorothy. The old man looked embarrassed, and then he said, I'm afraid I'm the powerful Wizard of Oz. I'm not really a wizard at all. I'm a conjurer. Everything that you see, the Emerald City, this room, the giant head, they are all illusion. He went on to tell them his story. Several years ago I worked in a circus performing magic tricks and creating illusions. I used to use a hot air balloon to perform in. One day the ropes holding the balloon to the ground worked loose and the wind carried me off, up and up to the kingdom of Oz. The people here had never seen a hot air balloon and they thought I was a powerful wizard. I rather liked being a wizard so I used some of my tricks to make them believe I had special magic powers. For instance, making everyone wear green glasses made the city look as if it was made of emeralds. But the only problem was the four witches. Two of them were friendly, but the other two, the Witch of the East and the Witch of the West, were determined to expose me. I couldn't believe my luck when you killed the Witch of the East, so I took my opportunity to get you to kill the Witch of the West. I'm sorry if I tricked you, he added, but I was desperate. That's all very well, said Dorothy sternly, but what about us? What are we going to do? Well, suggested the wizard, I think in the scarecrow's case he doesn't really need a brain now. He has gained experience from his adventures, so he knows a lot now instead of nothing. But if he really feels he needs a brain, I can make him one from a paste of bran and pins, so he'll always have a sharp intelligence. And as for the tin man, he has shown that he is strong and true, but if he wants a heart to prove it, then I can give him this one, made of sawdust, wrapped in a red cloth. The lion has proved how brave he is, but I can give him this bottle of courage, so he can take a large draught when he feels in need. But as for you, Dorothy, that is more difficult. The only thing I can suggest is that I try to take you home in my hot air balloon. So the wizard got out his hot air balloon and repaired the ropes with long pieces of silk. Finally, it was all ready to go. The wizard climbed into the basket and called to Dorothy and Toto to climb aboard. Before I leave, he announced, I want to appoint the Scarecrow as Governor of the Emerald City in my absence. He will take care of everything until I return. The wizard was so busy making speeches that he hadn't noticed a great gust of wind blowing up. And before Dorothy and Toto could get into the basket, the balloon lifted up and shot into the sky, leaving them all behind as the wizard waved forlornly. Dorothy was in despair. She thought she would never get home now. Don't worry, said the scarecrow. 
We won't give up yet. Let's follow the yellow brick road back and try to find the witch of the south. She will help us. So the friends set off yet again, but this time they were braver and wiser. After several days, they finally found the witch of the south. They told her their story and the tale of their adventures in the kingdom of Oz. So you see, said Dorothy, we have done everything possible, and now we need you to help us. Of course, agreed the witch, that is only fair. Each one of you can have a wish, and it will be granted immediately. The scarecrow asked to go back and govern the Emerald City, because he now felt clever enough to do a job. The tin man wanted a kingdom of his own, so he could practice being good and kind. So the witch of the south gave him the kingdom of the wicked witch of the west. The lion wanted to be the king of the animals again, now that he felt strong and brave, and that left Dorothy. All I want is for Toto and me to go home to Kansas, she said. That's no problem either, laughed the witch of the south. The silver shoes you're wearing have the power to take you home. If only she had known, she could have gone home the day she arrived in the Kingdom of Oz, but then she would have missed all the wonderful adventures that had happened to her. Dorothy said goodbye to her friends and did as the Witch of the South had told her. She stamped her heels three times while saying the name of the place she wanted to go. In a flash, Dorothy, with Toto in her arms, was back in the big field in front of her home. The silver shoes had gone, and everything on the farm was just as she had left it. Dorothy was overjoyed to be back with her aunt and uncle, but she knew she could never forget the wizard and her adventures in the kingdom of Oz. The End